Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Queensland Masterclass. Um, this is one of many sessions taking place on our Facebook page for the TTG Digital Destinations Festival in association with WTM and 13 of our tourist board partners. Um, I'm Maddie Barber. I'm Special Projects Editor at TTG. And I've got Emma Rowan here from uh, Tourism and Events Queensland, who's Trade and Marketing Manager for the UK. Um, this is the first um, of three sessions we're hosting this week with Queensland, um, the TTG Digital Destinations Festival lead partner. Tomorrow morning at 9.30, we'll be running a yoga class with Queensland-based yoga guru, Annalisa. Um, she's been stretching her way all around the state to bring you a very soothing session. Um, so make sure you have your leggings and mat at the ready. Um, then on Thursday at four o'clock, uh, you can take part in a fun pub quiz and give yourself a chance to win a £100 John Lewis voucher and a bundle of wellness themed goodies. Um, both of these sessions are being broadcast on Facebook Live, so you can tune in right here. Um, but make sure you sign up for the quiz in advance um, so we can send you your answer sheet. And you can do that at tgmedia.com forward slash deskfest. So today we're going to be focusing on destination training in this masterclass, um, following on from the Queensland and Western Australia masterclass we held on the 22nd of April. Um, you can watch that now in the videos tab on the Travel Trade Gazette Facebook page. Emma is here to share some of Queensland's secrets across the wildlife, adventure, food and drink and accommodation tourism sectors. Um, so I'll be handing over to her in a sec and asking some questions about that. Um, she will also be explaining the ways in which you can experience Queensland from the comfort of your own home at this time. Um, and if you have any questions during the session, feel free to type them in the comment section. Um, and we have a Queensland representative behind the scenes ready to answer them there for you. Um, she's also, also going to be posting some links to some things that you might find interesting too. So, um, kind of moving on to the training part, um, Emma, Queensland has a lot of iconic sites that UK travellers like to visit. Um, such as the Great Barrier Reef and the Daintree Rainforest. Um, but does the state have lesser known gems that second time or repeat visitors might like to go and see? Yeah, so hello everyone. Um, and hi again, Maddie. It's nice to see you. I've got a new background this time. So I'm in the rainforest this time round, which is very fitting because, um, yeah, definitely. So aside from the Great Barrier Reef and the Daintree, which is definitely both first time must do's for any client heading out to Queensland. Um, there's some other really special landscapes and environments throughout the state and I'm going to cover up a few of those now. So a great example of one of these unique ex um, environments is in Noosa. So Noosa on the Sunshine Coast is probably best known for its beaches, it's sort of real quintessential Aussie lifestyle, it's amazing dining and cafe culture. But what you might not know is that only 30 minutes from the beach um, and from Noosa, you've got this an amazing Everglades system. So there's actually only two Everglades systems in the world. So one of them is in Florida and the other one, as I say, is in Noosa. And it's just an amazing environment to head out um, and see. So you can take a cruise or you can take a kayak and you sort of tinker around the waterways. Um, for me, it's the cruise because you actually get a glass of bubbles that you can sip as you're listening to the bird life as you tinker around the waterways. And it's really incredible. Like the waters are almost black in colour because they've got the tannin which seeps in from from the eucalyptus trees which line the waterways so it makes the water really reflective which is where the nickname the river of mirrors comes from so that's an amazing one to um to head head to um now another one i touched on talking about fraser island in our last chat back in april um, and i talked about some of the beauty spots that you can see there so you've got lake mackenzie eli creek but my top tip. I have to is... apologise here. My uh, my cat just made an appearance. Oh, oh, we've got a guest, a <laughs> special <Yeah>. guest. <laughs> um, Apologies, carry on. <laughs> but my top tip is um, to head to the champagne pools. Now, unfortunately, they are not filled with champagne. But what they are are these natural whirlpools that have been sort of carved out or eroded into the rock. And at low tide, they're sort of the perfect depth just to have a, a dip in. So that's a top tip from me. Um, Another one that I'd recommend is that your clients head out to maybe the Gold Coast or the Sunshine Coast hinterland regions. So this is the hinterland. What that means is it's basically the countryside sort of set a little bit off of the, the main sort of um, 
coastline, um, often referred to as the green behind the gold. And it's these subtropical environments that are really rich in waterfalls and walking routes and nature trails. And actually, I've got a waterfall um, here. So my background today is at a waterfall. And I've just found out only about 20 minutes ago that it's this waterfall, which is actually in the tropical north of Queensland. It's where Peter Andre did his famous um, his, one of his famous videos. So that's a good tip to send a client to go and see um, this waterfall, the Miller Miller Falls here. But anyway, going back to the Sunshine Coast hinterland, where, as I say, there's heaps and heaps of waterfalls to explore. But one of my faves there is to um, drive through the Glasshouse Mountains region. Now, these are funny little almost witchy hats and um, volcanic peaks that are fascinating. Um, or you can head up into the Lamington National Park on the Gold Coast and where you can spot glowworms um, on, on the caves. So heaps to see, really interesting way to drive through it. Um, talking of driving, I think one of the lesser known sort of landscape regions in Queensland is actually the outback. So we've got an amazing outback. We're often known for being reefs, rainforests and, and sublime beaches, which of course we are, but this red earth, this outback um, landscape is, is amazing and you can send your clients out to do it in a number of ways, maybe via an event. So we've got the Mount Isa Rodeo, which is an annual event. We've also got the Birdsville Big Red Bash, where you can combine music and food, campfires, entertainment, and it's how to get a real taste of Queensland. Oh, sounds amazing. So many good opportunities there. Was it, was it the mysterious girl? Um, it was, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've only just found this out, so who knew? <laughs> Great. And um, so in the last session on 22nd of April, we spoke about some of Queensland's most iconic wildlife experiences. Um, what kind of other secrets are there that wildlife loving clients might like to know about or visit for themselves? Yeah, so I'll start off by talking about our marine life. So obviously on the Great Barrier Reef, you can witness amazing marine life up and down the 1400 miles of, um, of reef there. Um, we've got a fantastic tick list actually, which is a really great tool in, a, in order to advise your clients of all the amazing marine life that they should see. So like Africa has its big five, we have our great eight. So I will, um, I'll whittle through what they are, but the idea is that it's these eight critters that you can't see in this collective anywhere else in the world. So it's really unique to Queensland. So I'm gonna do a roll call to run through them. So number one, you've got your clownfish, which is your Nemo's. Number two, you've got your rays. So including the enormous manta rays. Number three, you've got giant clams. Four, you've got potato cod. Now these guys are like 1.5 meters in length. They're enormous fish. Um, number five, your sharks. Number six, your Maori wrasse, which are these really colorful fish that are sometimes known as the dogs of the sea because they're really friendly. They're very curious, but big old fish that come up and say hello. Number seven, you've got your turtles. And then number eight, your whales. So I think for me, it's the turtles and the whales, which are two of the most just special creatures to see. Um, and on the reef, you've actually got the chance to see six out of the seven species of turtle. Um, and seeing them just glide around is just out of this world. It is, every time I see one, it still just you know blows my mind. It's so, so special. Um, I think a really special time to go and visit is actually January through to March, which is when the, um, the hatchlings are actually making their way down the beach. So they've been um, laid sort of November, December time, and then they hatch between January and February, uh, February and March. And they make their way down to the ocean, off into the world. Um, and it's in the Southern Great Barrier Reef that that's a really great place to see them. And that's where you can see the manta rays too. Or the other, as I say, my other favorite are the whales. So. 33,000 humpback whales migrate along the Queensland coastline between May and November every, every year. Um, and that's a really great time. You've got a real chance to see them. Um, I think I saw, I was very lucky, I caught a mother and a calf um, breaching at exactly the same time off the coast of um, off the Gold Coast and it's just so so special. It's amazing to see. And um, there's a very famous whale actually called Migaloo. 
who is an albino humpback. So he's completely white, um, but he's been uh, migrating since about the early 90s. So if you saw him, that would be very, very lucky. Um, but you can actually swim with two types of whale in Queensland. So up in the tropical north, you can swim with the minke whales between about June and July time. Um, and then you can actually swim with the humpbacks um, off the Fraser and Sunshine coasts between July and October. So you can literally get into the water and you're eye to eye with these gentle giants. Oh, great. Thank you. And um, what, what about on land? Uh, yeah, there's some, um, oh, well, across the entire state, there's amazing ways to see the koalas. Or for me, it's the seeing the wallabies um, that come onto the beaches of Cape Hillsborough in the Mackay region in the morning. So if you head to Cape Hillsborough, as dawn is, is breaking, you're very likely to see the, you're guaranteed to see, I should say, the wallabies, um, they have their breakfast, they actually snack on seed pods, so seaweed, um, so you can go down and have a snack with them, and again, they're very curious, so they're very likely to come up close. Um, of course, seeing nature in the wild is amazing, but we've got a whole host of amazing ways to um, sort of see uh, wildlife up close and personal in some of our sanctuaries, so we've got you know, ways to see crocs up close and personal. We've got amazing butterfly houses, koala rescue sanctuaries, as well as, our, you know, our, our zoos as well. So there's a whole way to see your favourites up close. Yeah, I might have to put the uh, wallabies on my 2021 wish list. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, great. So there are clearly heaps of adventures to be had in Queensland. Um, but what about adventures for agents to look out for when selling 21 travel in particular? Um, yeah, I think that we've got some really exciting new attractions that um, we're really keen to tell everyone about. Um, one of them is the Underwater Museum of Art, which is just opening up this year. And we've got another part to it opening up later this year. Um, so this is off the coast of Townsville and up in the waters of the tropical north. So as I say, it's an underwater museum. So it's been designed by a British designer named Jason DeCares Taylor, and he's created a whole host of um, sculptures which are actually set below the waterline. Um, so these sculptures seek to tell the story of reef conservation and restoration and have really interesting indigenous um, stories sort of woven into them as well. So two are live already and there's a further two to come shortly. So one of them is it's called the Coral Greenhouse and it's this underwater piece um, near Palm Island. So you need to dive to go and see it. But essentially it's this amazing underwater greenhouse filled with sculptures of reef guardians. Um, and they're sort of there propagating the coral and spreading the message of reef conservation for future generations. That's the idea behind it. So it's a really beautiful piece. And over the next few years, as marine life starts to move in and coral starts to grow, it will just sort of flourish. So it's, it's beautiful now, but in a few years time is going to be when, you know, to go and have a look at it, it's going to be amazing. And then the other piece that's already live is one called the Ocean Siren. And it's this enormous statue who extends out of the ocean and you can actually see that from the Townsville coastline. And um, as I say, two more to come, so keep your eyes peeled for those. But a really exciting time for the region, and it's possible to pair a visit out to these um, sites with a trip out to Magnetic Island, which has a huge koala population as well. So that's definitely a good one to go and um, suggest that your clients um, go and see. Um, another one, if you've got clients who like trekking or walking, the Scenic Rim Walking Trails, you've got a whole host of them that um, your clients are going to love. So you've got some, um, these walking trails, there's two day, three day, five day or seven day walking trips, which you can book your clients onto. Um, and you actually pair these amazing walks with um, luxury accommodation, staying in glamping tents and lodges along the way um, with amazing dining as well. So, just you know, for clients who just like getting out into, into nature, that's a really good option for them. Um, but one of my favourites is um, the Carlo Sand Blow. So this is um, an amazing place in um, Rainbow on the Sunshine Coast. It's this huge um, sand dune up on the headland with views out over the ocean. And my top tip for this um, hidden gem is to actually head up there again just before dawn because the sun rises up and over the ocean. And if you're lucky, you might even spot a whale there if you're at the right if you're there at the right time. Oh wow! Some really good options there. That sounds very exciting. Mm. Um, and, and clients are likely to want to stay in accommodation that's a far cry from their UK homes um, after, the, after the lockdown has been lifted. Um, so, you know, what are your best recommendations for the um, best places to stay? Yeah, there's, 
there's a whole array of places to stay throughout the state from really like cozy and homely ma and pa businesses that are really small and you get that real sort of bespoke service to island resorts to rainforest lodges and um, outback stays so you know you can really you know hone in on what your client's looking for there's going to be something that's going to be perfect for them and if, if there's anyone listening that you know get, drop us a line and we can adv help advise and help shape and um, clients itineraries if that's if that's useful um but I must um, tell you one very important update is um, about our Whitsunday Islands Resorts. So they're all back online and looking better than ever. They did, you know, following the 2017 cyclone, they did take a bit of a bashing. But like I say, they're all back open and are ready to welcome guests once again. And they're looking fantastic. Um, three to pick out in particular. So Intercontinental Hayman Island Resort. Daydream Island Resort and Elysian Retreat on Long Island have all had complete makeovers and are looking fantastic and they of course then join Hamilton Island Resort too. So there's a real array of choice there for clients to choose in the Whitsundays region, inclusive of on the mainland at Early Beach as well. But I think what's great about this region is the breadth of accommodation spans from luxury to family friendly to completely self-contained apartment style. So there's again something for everybody there. Okay, great. And you, you mentioned luxury in there, um, but are there any other options for clients that have a bit more money to spend and are looking for a bit more of a luxury trip? Yeah, there's, um, I think for a taste of luxury, a really great tool or a place to start is to look at Tourism Australia's Luxury Lodges of Australia portfolio. So this is a curated sort of group of um, lodges which have, you know, that have been already tried and tested and are perfect for this um, sort of demographic uh, or this group. So um, within the Luxury Lodges of Australia portfolio, we've got five Queensland um, properties in there. So I'll just whittle them off. You've got Lizard Island, um, Silky Oaks Lodge, Qualia on Hamilton Island, Spices Peak Lodge, which is just outside Brisbane. And then our newest lodge, which has just entered into the Luxury Lodge of Australia portfolio, is one called Mount Mulligan Lodge, which is actually an outback um, uh, option, which is really exciting. It's on a working cattle farm. And actually, if you watch our, um, our showcase, our wellness showcase tomorrow morning, we'll be showing you a little bit of that environment because um, we're going to be showcasing uh, Mount Mulligan Lodge as part of that. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Okay, cool. And, and it's really important to factor in food and drink when planning holiday, because um, obviously it holds a lot of appeal for UK travellers. Um, what, what are some of your top restaurant or culinary recommendations for visitors to Queensland? Yeah, you're totally right. Food and drink is so important for any holiday. It can almost be make or break, can't it? Yeah. Um, but what you have in Queensland is um fresh ingredients throughout the state to start with, which really forms like the bedrock of just some really great dining. So. I guess what you've got fresh from the ocean every day is prawns or Harvey Bay scallops. You've got slipper crab, lobster, barramundi. And then when you pair that with the tropical flavours of the land, you've got your pineapples, your, your mangoes, your coffee, your ginger and your locally farmed beef. And as I say, this just forms the basis of some really incredible dining experiences. Um, because across the state, you know, we've seen a real growth in this sort of real refined contemporary Aussie dining. So places in, you know, Noosa or up in Palm Cove, um, brand new um, into Brisbane, you've got a Three Blue Ducks. Um, and the thing that binds, you know, all of these amazing places together is just their quest for local flavours. You know, the food is coming from the land on which you're sort of sat. Um, one um, in particular I must mention is a real special dining experience, maybe someone who's got a special birthday or an anniversary or something. Um, but you can have a dining experience where you actually take a helicopter over to Vlasov Sanke, um, where you'll actually have a picnic on your own private sort of sandbar out on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and again, actually keep your eyes peeled on our session tomorrow because we'll be showcasing this amazing sandbar and and the heli that you'd actually use to get out there and um, but what you do is you'll go for a dip in the sea um you're um you have a beautiful picnic complete with bubbles set up for you to enjoy you'll come off out, out of the ocean from your swim um and then dine um on the sand um there's also been a really big um growth in craft beer and craft gin as well so um if you've got clients interested in either of those we've got some really great tip top 
top tips for um, for you there. So check out some of our blogs. Um, but one of my favourite things to do in Queensland is just to head to the local surf club or to the fish and chippy. Um, to get some bites and go and sit by the ocean um, and listen to the sound of the sea as you eat. Oh, fish and chips by the sea, can't beat it. <laughs> oh, no, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. so, while we're still waiting for this, le this leisure travel to start up again, uh, many agents and their clients are taking to virtual experiences, sorry, virtual experiences. Um, how can agents experience Queensland from the comfort of their own homes during this time? Oh, we've got heaps of ways. So. I would recommend that you head over to our Facebook page, so our consumer Facebook page, and um, throughout the next few weeks, they've already started, but we're um, that's the most perfect just to have that moment of calm, just to sit and just you know let the sun rise or the sun set. So I recommend that your clients go and have a look at that, or for other agents as well. Um, there's heaps of tours that um, you can undergo via, um, have a look on our website for those. Or as, as we've already mentioned, Maddie, definitely head at um, 9.30 tomorrow morning. Join us for a very, very special yoga session. We're very excited. We've got Annalisa ready to guide us through some breathing, meditation and some yoga moves. Or join us for our pub quiz later this week as well, four o'clock on Thursday, I think it is. So it's going to be the ultimate Queensland pub quiz. So that's going to be a bit of fun too. Cool. And um, how can agents keep in touch with you for the latest Queensland news? Definitely head to um, our corporate website. There's um, heaps of information about borders and things like that there. So that's a really good tool. Um, or sign up for our TEQ trade newsletter. So we send this out every few weeks. It's got really great information about what's going on, um, new openings, um, you know, virtual tours, all that kind of thing. So either drop me a line or um, we'll, uh, we'll pop the... Um, the link to that in the in the comments for this section as well. So any agent can sign up there. Thanks, Emma. So I think that brings our session to a close now. Um, so don't forget to tune in to the yoga class tomorrow, as Emma said, 9.30 a.m. Um, I'll be hosting that one as well. Um, and then the Queensland pub quiz, of course, at four o'clock on Thursday. Um, for, des for more destination training, our next masterclass um, for the TTG Digital Destinations Festival is tomorrow at 11 a.m. and that's going to be with Brand USA. Um, you can also check out the Digital Destinations Festival timetable and all the previous content that we've put out this week at ttgmedia.com forward slash deskfest. So thanks very much to Emma for joining me and thank you everyone for watching. Bye. -bye. <laughs>